and today the topic of discussion is candidate key and in candidate key we are going to understand shortcut to calculate the candidate key prior to this video we have seen how to calculate the candidate key but that method was quite long so now we'll understand the shortcut method to find the candidate key so let's start with the questions so the question there are two questions and in given questions you have given a relational schema you have given a functional dependency you have to find the candidate key and the number of candidate key and again you have given a relational schema two functional dependency and you have to find the candidate key so let's start with this question you have given x arrow y y to z and z to x you just do make a arrow diagram from x to y make a arrow diagram x to y fine okay then y to z y to z fine okay then z to x z to x means what here is z and here you move to x z to x i'm sorry z to x fine okay now now arrow diagram is completed now you watch the arrow diagram very carefully and find out those attribute which do not have any arrow pointing towards them x have an arrow pointing yes x has an arrow pointing towards it y has an arrow yes y has an arrow z has an arrow yes z has an arrow w has an arrow no w has not an arrow so w is a kind of attribute which is not determined by any of the functional dependency since w is an attribute which is not determined by any of the uh, functional dependency then 100 percent w will be the integral part of the candidate key i don't know what will be the my candidate key i i even don't know right now what will be my candidate key but very sure that whatever will be the candidate key w will be the integral part of that candidate key because w is not determined by any of the functional dependency then w should be there fine okay so first check closure of only w can only w be a candidate key so let's find w closure so the closure of w will have only w because the closure will have w itself because if you are just currently watching this video i request you to kindly watch my closure video closure of an attribute then you will able to understand okay now use functional dependency here is w here is x you cannot use it here is w here is y you cannot do this use this here is w and here is z you cannot use any of the functional dependency so the closure of w has only w since w do not have all the attribute of a table so w is not candidate key since w is not having all the attribute so w is not candidate key fine okay so i just told you i don't know what will be my candidate key but w will be a integral part of that candidate key so now make combination of w so w comes with x w comes with y and w comes with z and don't do such stupidity that w comes with w because w w will give you w not w w okay fine so now find the closure of w x so first of all closure of wx will have wx fine okay now use the functional dependency do you have x yes i have x so by the help of x you can determine y i write y over here do i have y yes i have y with the help of y you can determine z i have determined z now with the help of two functional dependency you have determined all the attribute of a table so wx is a candidate key so wx is a candidate key so i am writing wx is a candidate key fine okay now compute closure of wy so wy what will be wy first of all wy will be the part of closure fine now use functional dependency x is x we have no we don't have x we have w and y so i cannot use it right now i use this is i uh, am i having y yes so y can de determine z so i'm writing z over here okay uh, do i have z yes with the help of z you can write x fine so i have written x so with wy closure you have determined all the attribute of a table so wy is also a candidate key fine okay now take the closure of wz so the closure of wz will have what wz fine now use xy do i have x no i cannot use xy do i have y no because of which i cannot use yz do i have z yes with the help of z you can write x so i have written x now again move up and use this do i have x now i have x with the help of x you can determine y so y so with the help of wz closure i am determining all the attribute of our table so wz is also a candidate key fine so we have three candidate key now you might be thinking can we make wxy or wxz because w will be the integral part 
or w x y z as a key now let me tell you my dear the definition of candidate key was a candidate key is a super key a candidate key is a super key whose no proper subset is a super key so if i say if i say suppose this is a candidate key suppose this is a candidate key but the the proper subset of w x y is already a candidate key so 100% that could this could not be a candidate key so i request you to kindly watch my video of candidate key so w x y can be super key but it cannot be candidate key similarly with w x z and similarly with w they all can be a super key but they won't be able to make as a candidate key fine so now we have three candidate key w x w y and w z fine okay let's start with second question and the second question is R X Y is uh, X Y Z W is a attribute X Y to Z W make diagram arrow diagram X Y to Z and W fine okay W to X W to X fine okay now find out those attribute which do not have arrow pointing X have arrow yes Y have arrow no Y have no arrow Z has arrow yes W has arrow here yes only Y is an attribute which is not having any arrow since y is not determined by any of the uh, functional dependency so i don't know what will be my candidate key but all the candidate key will have y as an integral part so now first calculate closure of y can y itself be a candidate key so y closure will have y fine okay now use functional dependency i should have x y i have only y i cannot use i should have w i have only uh, y so i cannot use both the functional dependency so closure of y will have only y because of which this is not a candidate key because of this this is not a candidate key so again what we'll do we make a combination with y so one combination will be x y one combination will be z y one combination will be w y fine so now find the closure of all these attributes okay so let's start with the closure of xy so xy will have xy fine so with the help of xy you can determine zw fine so since with the help of xy you are determining all the attribute of a table so xy is a candidate key fine now use zy zy closure will have zy fine now use functional dependency i need xy i have zy no i cannot use this i need w i don't have w so zy closure will have only zy since zy is unable to determine all the attribute of a table so this is not candidate key fine okay now use wy closure so wy closure will have wy now use this do i have xy no i have wy so i cannot use zw fine do i have w yes now i have w with the help of w you can determine x so i am writing x over here fine okay now move up can i use xy now i have x also i have y also yes i can determine xy with zw so w is already there so i'll write only z so with the help of wy closure you are determining all the attribute of a say, table so wy is also a candidate key fine so wy is also a candidate key so now you have two candidate key and zy is not a candidate key so now take out zy and make combination of zy so zy can have combination of w and zy can have combination of uh, x fine these are two possible combination that zy can have but do they be a candidate key now let me tell you my dear if i take this the proper subset of z y w which is what w y which is what w y is already a candidate key since proper subset is already a candidate key so this could not be a candidate key this can be super key but this cannot be a candidate key so 100 percent this is not a candidate key i'm concerned about only candidate key now take z y x so z y x if i say z y x x y is already see x y is already a candidate key so and the proper subset of z y x is already a candidate key so this cannot be a candidate key fine so now i have only two candidate key one is x y and one is w y fine so this is all about shortcut method of candidate key now move up to another questions now you have a given uh uh, mcq to find uh, the candidate key and number of candidate key so let's start with the question the question is there is a relational schema having six attributes okay p q r s t u using following functional dependency okay determine candidate key and number of candidate key so let's start so we have p we have q we have r we have s t and u now use arrow diagram p q to r 
dot let me change the color of my pen then pq to r pq to r fine okay then r to s r to s fine okay then q to pt then with q what you are doing you are determining t and you are determining p fine now just find out those attribute which do not have arrow pointing to it p have arrow yes q have arrow no q have q do not have arrow so q will come okay r have arrow yes S has an arrow, yes. T has an arrow, yes. U has arrow, no. So, 100%, I don't know what will be my candidate key, but whatever will be the candidate key, Q, U will be the integral part. So, first calculate the closure of Q, U. So, closure of Q, U will have Q, U. Okay, again I am saying, if you are still confused, kindly watch my video of attribute of closures. Fine, okay. So, Q, U closure will have Q, U. Now, use functional dependency. Do you do I have PQ? No, I have QU. Do I have R? No, I have QU. Do I have Q? Yes, I have Q. So with the help of Q, you can write PT. So I am writing PT. So now I have used this functional dependency. Now come to this PQ. Now I have PQ. Yes, now I have P and Q both. So with the help of PQ, you can determine R. So I am writing R over here. Fine. So this is also used. Now use RS. Do I have R? Yes. So with the help of R, I can determine S. So now see that with the help of Q, you you are determining all the attribute of a table, all the attribute of a table. Though the hundred percent, so Q U is a candidate key. So Q U is a candidate key. Is only Q U a candidate key? Yes, only Q U will be a candidate key because if you increase any of the candidate key, but all the candidate key will have a q u as an integral part i just told you i don't know what will be my candidate key but q u will be the integral part suppose i make q u p suppose i make q u t suppose i make q u uh, p r all these are superset and all the subset subset of this is a candidate key subset of this is a candidate key subset of this is a candidate key if the subset is already a candidate key then superset can be a super key cannot be a candidate key kindly watch the video of candidate key first fine so these all can be what super key but cannot be candidate key so yes we have only one candidate key the name of candidate key is q u so the correct answer is one let's check the answer yes the correct answer is one fine so let's start with another question so we have another question given a relational schema r a b c d using following fd determine number of candidate key so you have given another question and you have to determine number of candidate key so let's start with the question question is r a b c and d and now use functional dependency a b to c d a b to c and d D. Fine. Okay. C to A. C to A. Fine. Okay. Then D to B. Then D to B. Fine. Now my method is find out those attributes which do not have arrow pointing towards them. A has arrow. Yes. B has arrow. Yes. C has arrow. Yes. D has arrow. Yes. Oh my God. Now all the attributes are having arrow. What to do this in this case? Because prior to this, I have already told you find out those attributes which do not have any arrow pointing towards them. But in this question, all the arrow are pointing all the attributes of a table. So in this kind of in this type of question, what you do, you just check all the attribute individually and then make the combination. So what I will do, I will check all the attribute individually okay so let me change the color of my pen and i check all the attribute individually so now i check a i check b c and d individually now find the closure of a so closure of a will have a now use functional dependency do i have a b no i have only a do i have c no i have only a do i have d no i have only a so the closure of a will have only a since it is not determining all the attribute so this is not candidate key so a is not candidate key a is not candidate key fine okay okay then use b closure of b the closure of b will have b 
now use functional divide. Do I have AB? No, I have only B. Do I have C? No, I have B. Do I have D? No, I have B. So closure of B is only B. So this is also not candidate key and this was not also candidate key. Fine. Use closure of C. So closure of C will have C. Now use AB. A, do I have AB? No, I have only C. Do I have C? Yes. So with the help of C, you can determine A. So I have written A. Fine. Okay. Now move further. Do I have D? No, I don't have D. So now move again to the first. Do I have AB? No, I don't have AB. I have only AC. So do I have C? Yes. With the help of C, you have determined A. You have already did that. So with the help of C, you can determine only CA. So this is not the candidate key because you are not determining all the attribute. Now find the closure of D. So the closure of D will have D. Okay. Closure of D will have D. Now use this AB. Do I have AB here? No, I have only D. Do I have C over here? No, I have D. Do I have D? Yes. With the help of D, you can determine B. Fine. Now use this. Do I have AB now? No, I have DB. Do I have C? No, I have DB. Do I have D? Yes, D, but DB has already determined. So this is also not candidate key. So what we have concluded that individually neither A nor B nor C nor D is what? none of them are what none of them are candidate key so what i'll make the combination so what are different combinations one is ab one is ac and one is ad now this is all with a now make use of b ba ba is already ab so no use bb i cannot use bb then bc then bd fine now use d da i have already used ad db already bd is there d d db is all not there dc yes i can make dc as dc is not existing so what combination i am having ab ac ad bc bd and dc now find out closure of all the attribute so ab closure is what ab closure is first of all ab closure will have ab fine ab closure will have AB. Okay, fine. So with the help of AB, can I determine CD? Yes. So I can write CD. Now with the help of AB closure, you are determining all the attribute of a table. So AB is a candidate key. Fine. Okay. Now use AB. Now use AC. So AC will have AC. Now check. Do I have AB? No, I have AC. Do I have C? Yes. With the help of C, you can determine A, but A is already there. So I will not use A. Do I have D? No, I don't have D. So with the help of AC, you are determining only AC. So this is not candidate key. This is not candidate key. Fine. Okay. Now find closure of AD. So AD closure will have AD first. Now do check this. Do I have AB? No, I have AD. Do I have C? No, I don't have C. Do I have D? Yes. I have D. So with the help of D, I can write B over here. Now again move to the first. Do I have AB now? Yes, I have A and B now. So with the help of AB, you can determine CD. Since C is all, D is already there, so write C. So now I have all the attribute of a table. So AD is what? Candidate key. AD is what? Candidate key. This AC is not candidate key. I'm crossing. Okay. Now find closure of BC. So BC closure will have BC. Now use this functional dependency. Do I have AB? No. Do I have C? Yes. With the help of C, you can determine A. So I have written A over here. Do I have D? No, I don't have D. Because, why? Because, as I am not having D, so I cannot write B over here. Fine. Okay. Now move to the first. Do I have AB? Yes, I have AB now. So with the help of AB, you can write CD. Since I have already C, I can write D. So now... With the help of BC, you are determining all the attribute of a table. So BC is a candidate key. So BC is a candidate key. Fine. Now find the closure of BD. So BD closure will have BD. Fine. Okay. So do use this. AB is there? No. AB is not there. C is there? No. D is? Yes. Yes. With the help of D, you can write B. Since B is already there, I cannot do anything. Now again move. So the, no matter how many times you move, you will only get BD. So this is not candidate key. Because candidate key should have all the attribute. Now find the closure of DC. So DC will have DC. So do I have AB? No. Do I have C? Yes. With the help of C, you can write A. And with the help of D, do I have D? Yes. With the help of D, I can write B. So I have all attribute ABCD. So DC can determine all the attribute. So this is the candidate key. So this is a candidate key. Fine. So how many candidate key we have? We have AB. Uh, we have AD. Uh, we have BC. And we have DC. So we have four candidate keys. Fine. So answer is four.
Answer is false. Let's check the answer. Yes, 100%. So the answer is false. So this is all about the candidate key. And thank you so much.